Welcome to today's video. I'm going to be going over how we can create a camera like the one in Super Smash Bros. It follows all the players, keeps a general staging area in mind, and if players ever get too far off the screen, it ignores them. If you're interested in learning how to build this, stick around because I'm going over it right now. Okay, so I've broken this down into four major sections here, um, generally from easier to more advanced. And I think it's really important that we kind of take it step by step because otherwise if I introduced all these things all at once, things might get a little complicated. So to start off with, I'm going to talk about how we can take points from various players and average them together. So let's say that we have a tag on a player. We'll just assume this block is a player and this is the tag. I'll place it in the middle and what I'll do is I'll split the transform and I'll send the position wirelessly through a transmitter. So I'll give the transmitter a name. I'll just call it P for now. So if I copy this block over, these are both sending their locations to this transmitter P. So if I get another block out and I put a microchip on here, this thing can receive whatever's coming in through that transmitter. So I'll set this to look for P and I'll set it global. So since both of those things are sending their location in through P, what we're actually getting is an average of both of those points. I can prove this by getting a follower out and I'll just set the strength and damping all the way up and I'll plug this straight into the target position and when I start time we can see that the block goes right between the two. It's taking the average point between the two points. You can see if I move this out it continues to average between the two. So that's pretty neat. However, if we wanted to get a distance between the two points, I don't think we'd be able to do it with this because this is not giving us both of their points but an average of the two. So what I'll do instead is I'll come in here and I'll change this one to send to P1 and I'll change this to P2. Now we can still get the average so I'll change this to look for P1 and I'll get another one out and this will look for P2 we get a calculator out, if we plug these both into the same port and change this to a blend mode, this is giving us the average between the two. So now I can take this and plug it into the target position and we should have exactly the same functionality. The difference though is that now we can actually get the distance between the two things. So if I plug one into A and the other into B and I take the absolute value, that gives us the distance between these two objects. You can see that as I move this one further away, the distance increases. So with this, we can kind of play with some zoom levels here. So if I split this, we can see that this is the average between the two. Now if I take a combiner and turn it into a three number combiner, I can take the x and y values from the average. Then I'll take the distance and what I'll do just to ensure some sort of safety here is I'll put a 1 and we'll take the maximum between either the distance or 1, whichever one is bigger, will be the answer for z. So now we can see that it's basically doing the same thing except now it's taking the distance and it's either going to take 3.25 or 1, whichever is bigger, and set that as the z. What's cool about this is now that it's based off the distance, we can actually have the zoom of the camera or the distance of the camera change based on the distance between the two objects. So if I use a signal generator with a mover, I'll go ahead and plug that in like this. So if I start time, we can see how this object will move in and out based on the distance between the two objects. We can see as these two objects get closer, this other object gets closer up to a certain point, and as they get further away, it backs up. If I were to place a camera on here, and now I'll just make this invisible, 
you can see that the closer the objects are together, the closer the camera is, and the further apart they are, the further the camera gets. The objects pretty much stay in focus here, or at least on the camera the whole time, because we're using the XY coordinates of the average as our focus point, and because of the distance between the two, we're also backing the camera out accordingly. So now we have to consider what if there are more than two of these player objects on the scene? Say we have four. Well, we can pretty much do exactly what we're doing. I'll just change this to be P3, and I'll change this to be P4. And as far as the averaging goes, it's pretty much exactly the same. So I'll just pull these down. This will be P3, and this will look for P4. And these just go straight into this calculator, just like the other ones. And just for now, to help make things a little easier here, I'm going to just unplug this stuff. So we can see that it'll still take the average between all of the points. And I can maybe make this a little more obvious if I fix how these movers are working. So let me get rid of these. So what I'll do is I made this random movement chip, which just allows a chip to move randomly based on parameters I put in here. So you can see if I start time, it kind of moves around. The camera object here still takes the average point in the XY direction based off all of these points. But now how do we calculate the distance? It's not as simple as just one or two things because we need to know the max and min. So one thing we can do is we can actually get the max and min of, of the various points. So I'll plug these into here. And now I'll get one for the max and one for the min. So what we can do is if we put the minimum here like this, we can take the minimum of these two, and then the minimum of these two, and then the minimum of these two. And this will give us not necessarily one of these points, but the minimum x, y, and z values across all of these. So if this first one is at 0, 0, 0, and this one is at 1, 1, negative 1, we'll get a value of 0, 0, negative 1 if these were the only two being looked at. So I'll output that. And then I'll just copy this and change these to maximum. So we have these top ones, these ones being maximum here, and these ones being minimum. So I'll just plug this into these. And now we can do exactly what we did before. We'll take the distance between the maximum and the minimum, and then we can take that and plug it straight into this max thing we had before. So it'll either use the value that we have here or one, whichever is greater. And so now if I start time, we can see that it still takes the depth into account. And if I switch to the camera view, now we can see that it's still working. You know, it's taking all of these into account. Obviously, maybe one is a little too close. But the camera is keeping all of these things in focus because it's looking at the average point between the furthest away. And it's zooming out or backing up when the things get further apart.